Christmas special, Fishing in the West. Today I'm going to talk about a bunch of rigs that I had a lot of success with uh, this year and last year. Um, I'm going to start off with this uh, three inch, uh, three and a half inch uh, super salty tube kit. And I'm going to show you a really cool Texas rig uh, a technique that I have landed many smallies and largies on. Uh, here's the uh, what it looks like right now. I'm going to show you how to produce this in just a little bit. So what we're going to do is uh, start off with a, um, a little Texas rig hook, which we've got right here. See that right there? And we're going to take a little bit of a, a white uh, salty tube right there. We're going to hook it at the top just like so, like at the nose right there. Bring it through, circle, and then stop right here, and then twist it in a 180 angle, and bring it on through. So now you've got this little thing with your uh, loose hook still hanging out. And then we're gonna bend our uh, tube, kinda like this, and we're gonna hook the hook through. We're gonna stop right here, as you can see, it's kinda bent. Just like that, and all we're going to do is we're going to take the frills and pull back. Gently slide. And there you go. There's your uh, simple uh, Texas rig tube. Uh, I also use a uh, one of these little guys, these Cabela's, uh, Cabela's bullet head uh, weights to attach to the end of that just to give it some weight. Though I do fish uh, weightless with this, uh, I, I find it triggers a lot of downfall uh, attacks or hits. Uh, when you fish weightless like this, but uh, definitely great bait for uh, for summer, really hot days, um, river, small fishing, and largemouth fishing. Hey guys, welcome back. This next segment is all about uh, you. Uh, crappie fanatics out there who are looking for a different rig to catch uh, more and bigger crappie. Uh, this one in particular I'm going to show you is a three-in-one kind of combo. Uh, you're going to start off with a pear, a rattling pear bobber made by uh, Mr. Crappie. As you can see right there, it's a very small, very small bobber. And you're going you're to have your jig head right here. And this is the jig head from the kit that I showed you earlier. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to open up my uh, my uh, the Southern Pro Tackle tap, uh, uh, tube kit, and the color I'm going to pick today is a, uh, a little color like this. It's kind of like a little pumpkin seed, like a lime green uh, color. And what I'm going to do, take this, slide it through, but stop at the uh, at the bait guard right there, so uh, it looks extra long, as you can see. And what this does is it allows your bait to look longer and bigger. It adds more, it adds more uh, volume to your bait as well. And I find that a lot of I get a lot of more strikes on this. I don't know why, but I feel that there's a lot more movement uh, allowed in the back rather than having it uh, right up against that uh, the jig head itself. And then with that, I attach a uh, bobber two feet from the bait. Yeah, this is the bobber I'd be using. Uh, I've caught a lot of crappie, probably one of my biggest crappie in here, 14 inches fishing in three to two feet of water. Uh, slowly jigging this, slowly reeling it in. It lands you a lot of white crappie, a lot of black crappie, mostly white crappie. I've had uh, luck on this bait right here. Definitely suggest this rig up for your next uh, 2010 fall or uh, summer, spring, winter uh, crappie fishing trip. The, uh, the next one I'm going to talk about involves the rattling pair as well. Though this is going to involve a spoon. Uh, not a lot of people see a spoon. Not a lot of people use spoons for bass or crappie. They usually use it for salmon or uh, trout. And a lot of people mistaken this as being a cold water bait. Well, I found that this bait works great in cold water and warm water. And I'm going to show you how to rig it up here in just a second. What I do is I'll take this, usually attach a minnow uh, or some kind of uh, plastic bait, whether it be a tube or some kind of. Uh, uh, Berkeley Live uh, attractant at the end of this and all I do is attach this bobber right there though I attach it one foot this time from this and what I do is I do really quick 
uh, fast jerks, but very slowly and very not repetitively. I do uh, like let's say jerk one two three jerk one two three jerk, and what this does is it it gets the feeding crappie and bass going, especially on uh, days where the uh, shad or minnows are uh, bursting at the surface, and the crappie and the bass are really really trying to attack this, and uh, this is really great for crappie and uh, and uh, bass fishing. Next and final segment that I'm going to talk about also involves the rattling pair. Though this is probably one of the best baits I ever used and probably one of the best rig ups that I've ever used to catch the, my largest personally uh, bluegill. And this bluegill was almost 12 inches. Caught him at uh, Lake Sylvan and uh, if he was a little bit bigger he'd, he'd have been a, a really close to the state record. But anyways um, for all you bluegill, hardcore, uh, diehard uh, bluegill fanatics, check this out. You want to stay tuned. Um, you see this rig in a lot of uh, magazines, but all this is a really th a thick furred uh, plastic um, uh, feather jig. Uh, at the end, it's like a little attractant. And if you pull that back, you see this little tiny hook. And see this right here? This is the key to landing large bluegill. The smaller the hook, the bigger the fish, I say. Um, a lot of other people say that too as well. But I find this is uh, great for fishing in very shallow uh, areas with a lot of uh, structure, a lot of uh, uh, branches, low hanging, a lot of uh, fallen logs as well, where uh, the water's two t two to three feet deep, sometimes even one foot. I'll uh, fish on a mud flat and land huge uh, mud bottom uh, uh, blues like that blue uh, uh, bluegill. And I'll usually attach a bobber or go totally uh, bobberless with no weight except this. Sometimes I'll even attach a little Berkeley uh, gulp attractant at the end, or I'll attach a little, uh, just a regular gulp, um, alive uh, grub at the end of this, and jig this very slowly. And what this does is it's small enough bait to allow those bluegill to slurp it up. Uh, you know, a lot of people use bigger bla baits for bluegill, like crankbaits. The problem with that is the bluegill have a harder time of slurping that up. The only way they can get hooked on that is attacking it and swiping at it. With this, they can attack it, swipe at it, slurp it. They can do anything with this this little jig right here, and I definitely suggest the smaller baits for uh, bluegill and crappie. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tackle segment uh, for our last uh, part of our uh, fishing uh, Christmas, uh, fishing the Midwest uh, finale. So I hope you guys stay tuned and check out some more videos for 2010. I'll be posting a... Um, Marlowe's Pond again, uh, shallow water crank uh, bass fishing, and I'll uh, be producing another channel um, called the Angler's Challenge, and on that channel I will be doing um, uh, cha uh, challenges all about uh, me putting myself to the test. I'll be catching bass on two pound test, and I'll uh, you know that that kind of stuff, and I'll be fishing with a, a little cane pole for catfish, and, and just I'm mean, not extreme challenges, but I'll be putting myself to the test to see if I can catch. Let's say, you know, uh, three bass over 12 inches in a matter of an hour with only one bait, and that bait maybe has to be, uh, you know, under $2. I mean, it's complicated and it's fun. You know, it's it kind of brings a different level to fishing. So I'll have that up uh, 2010, and I'll make sure I have some uh, small videos, some more bass videos up in 2010, maybe some ice fishing videos before this uh, 2009 fishing season ends. So I hope you guys stay tuned and keep on watching Fishing in the Midwest. Mm -hmm.